Hello and welcome back to our RTS series. We're in episode 11 now and in this episode we're going to work on adding the resources to our map that our units will be able to mine and harvest resources to build units and other buildings to expand their forces. So we're looking at two units, uh, sorry, two resources in this game. We're looking at wood and looking at stone. Now the way this is going to work is they actually function pretty much the same way as buildings except for crucial differences in that uh, you can't make more of them uh, they are limited to the world that you're in and also you can't uh, they don't either let any menu you can't build from them or, or order something but you can still select them you can still view their health and enemies and units can still attack them and gather resources from them so to get started we're going to create our units for our trees and stones and place some of them in our world here so as I said, they're basically just units. So I'm going to go into our units folder and we're going to create a child of our unit building base. So right click and create child blueprint class for this. I'm going to go unit tree and open this up and find yourself to the mesh. And the mesh here, we're going to change to use our tree. So it's not that one, it's this one. So search for tree and what ones we do have here let's have a look yeah you know, I saw a nice spruce model we can use uh, that's looking a bit plain isn't it but never mind we'll, we'll have this um, and we've got a decal here which is probably a bit too big for this we'll probably scale this down to fit more of the shape of the tree like that okay so we've just got a final few shaders to compile for the leaves or branches in this case and that'll do there um, I'm actually going to change it to a spruce I think pretty sure I saw a spruce tree yeah I did cool that's better that's more what I want to see um, again a decal make sure it's the right sort of size yeah that's good for me and we're good to go here. So let's place a couple of these into our world here. So just drag them out. Add a bit of variation to them, like so. So a couple of things we need to tidy up here. Um, we're gonna to go to our building base parent class here, and we're gonna make it so that it is active, which is the boolean we're using to determine whether or not it is a placed building or not. We want that to determine whether or not we are setting a green placement effect. So on here, we're just going to, before we get to here, we'll put in is active and put in a branch between that. So on begin play, if uh, green placement is so it is active is set to false, uh, we want it to set the green placement. Okay. Um, we also want to make is active uh, editable. So click on the editable icon. And hit save. On our unit tree here, go to class defaults, go to your uh, side here and go is active and turn that on by default. This will be because it, it's a tree, it's always going to be useful, it's never going to be placed by the player, it's always going to exist there. So hopefully, when we play test that, we can see the trees are now there. As you see, the trees are still building up our menu here. This is not accurate. We don't want this to be the case. So let's stop that from happening. So let's go into our tree, or look into our unit first of all. So our unit building base, when we click on it, is showing the uh, is showing the widget. Okay. So what we're going to do here is when we click on it, on clicked for the tree, we want to override what we've got there. So go to your tree and we're going to do on clicked and simply just putting this in here is going to override it and then cancel out anything that was on there previously. So if I go back to play, place my base, find a tree, I can click on the tree without any issues. Okay. So next thing we do is add stone to this. So stone is going to be pretty much the same as tree. We're going to duplicate it and call it unit stone. And 
in there. I'm going to change the graphic, obviously. Do some stone. So type in stone or rock. There we are. And we'll choose rock zero one. Okay, and there's some rock. Hit compile, and we're done here. And we can drag out some rock into our world as well. Like that. Okay. Now you may see it's hovering. That's because it's part of a character mesh, and the capsule is too large. And you can see it on the trees as well. So let's just fix that quickly. Go to our viewport. Just make sure our rock here goes to the bottom of that capsule there. You make sure that's the case for all your units, really. See, it's done it to the capital as well. Okay. So I hit play. Place my capital. Now I've got stone and trees. So the next bit is selecting our characters over here and right clicking them to make them walk over to our trees here. At the moment, they will just walk to wherever I click on the floor. But if I click on a tree, nothing will happen. So that's because when we click on a tree with right click, it's blocking that hit before it hits the floor. So that's good because we want to intercept that and make it do something else different. In this case, walk over to it and then start mining it. So let's get walking over to it. So over on our actor on clicked event, we're going to check if the button press is equal to the right click. So do equals to and look for right click or right mouse button it's called there we are and put that into a branch so at the moment it won't do anything because we haven't set up right mouse button to be one that we can interact with so that's an easy fix we just go into our rts controller and on the right hand side we go down to click event keys and you can see the left mouse button's already there click on the plus and add the right mouse button as well I'll save that and close that. So now this will trigger this. Now what I want to do is I want to take what I've got currently selected and send those units to this location um, to mine it. So let's give them to just move to that location. That's the first task. So at the moment, the instructions for moving are quite simple. They're happening on the artist controller and they're happening on when we do, uh, where is it? Uh, left mouse button. No, not that. where is it? right mouse button here so at the moment we're doing this and then we you can see what we're going on here we're looking at our unit selection that we've got on our controller and then passing through each one and setting the uh key to be the target location so we're going to do exactly the same thing but for our trees so on trees here we want to get the player controller and cast to our rts controller because that's where that array exists so from there, we can get units selection and then go for each one of these. So for each loop. Now allow it to pass through each item in that array. Um, so with that each item in the array, we're going to take out here and we're going to um, set, uh, sorry, get their AI controller. And from there, get their blackboard. which we can then set value as vector. Then we can plug that into loop body there. The key name, we can drag out and we'll do make, and we'll call it target location. Same as we got for the, play, uh, the player movement, it's using the same key, but the vector value is different and that's coming from uh, the actor location of our tree. But before we use just actor location, we will make sure we're finding a place in navigable radius. So take that from there and we want to do get random point in navigable radius. Plug that into the vector there. Change the radius here to however big you want it to be. So we'll do 200. And I think that'll do. We'll hit compile and save that. So let's test that out now. If 
I select some units and go down to the trees off they go to the trees okay so now we've got them going to the tree and what we can do after that is make them play an animation to mine it and get, gather materials and that's what we'll do in the next part so the next part we'll tackle the actual mining and retrieving of those materials and then taking them back to their relevant location allowing our ai just to do that job so join us in the next episode over on patreon.com forward slash ryan ailey where a donation just one dollar will get access to all that content plus much much more thank you to all of my patrons and my youtube members for their continued support and if you're watching this and you're not yet subscribed hit that subscribe button and i'll see you all next time bye everyone